So once the user has authenticated using the Vuex action that we've already looked at, we want to update the navigation to reflect that. So what we want to do is add in some getters here. These aren't added by default, but getters will allow us to read information from our state. So the two getters that we're going to create in here are whether we are authenticated or not. So this could return a true or a false value. And we'll also want a getter to actually grab the user's information. So that will return to us an object with the user's information in there. Now for getters, we get the current state. So let's pull these both in here. And really, really simply, if we are authenticated, we want to check if we have a token and we have a user. They're the two things we want to look out for to check that we're authenticated. For the user, that's pretty straightforward. We just want to return state.user. So we've got two ways now, uh, or two getters that will allow us to check if we're authenticated and also extract the authenticated user's information from our store. So with this information, what we can do now do is update our navigation to show certain links based on these new getters and also fill in information like this. So let's go down and create a script tag in here. This is going to be very similar to over on our sign in page where we imported the ability to grab actions from our store. But what we're now going to do is instead import map and you've probably guessed getters from Vuex. So we don't spread these into methods. Instead, we spread these into computed properties. So let's go ahead and spread in map getters. And we've got the ability to check if we're authenticated, which comes from auth slash authenticated. And we have the ability to grab the user information, which comes from auth slash user. Let's just dump this out on the page just so we can see this working. And let's just pop this inside one of these list items. It doesn't really matter. So authenticated and user. And let's just get rid of authenticated. We're just going to use user for now. Uh, if we come over and sign in, we now see that information just up here. So we know that we can now check if the user is authenticated. We can show certain navigation items based on that. And we can also extract out that user's information as well. So what don't we want to show or rather what do we want to show if we are authenticated? Well, we want to show the user's name and we want to show the dashboard and we want to show the ability to sign out. So the easiest way to do this if you're working with say a list item like this is to create a template. So we're gonna wrap this whole thing in a template and we're gonna add a conditional to this template to say if we're authenticated, we want to show this information. As Soon as we head back and give this a refresh, notice we don't see any of that information until we go ahead and sign in and then that appears because our store has been hydrated without all that information. Now we also then want to take this list item here. We want to create a template underneath this just because we may have other list items and we'll indent that and we'll just say V else because we don't want to show the sign in link if we are already signed in. So let's sign in that swaps out for my name, dashboard and sign out, which we'll look at a little bit later. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is just grab the user's name, which is really simple. We've already seen that object output. We just want to say user.name. And this will work for any of the information that we have in our store, which is a direct result of what we return from that me endpoint. So when I go ahead and hit this, we get my name and my email address, which has come back from our API. So we're just going to, of course, show the user's name here for now. So let's update that. And that is pretty much it. So we can authenticate the user using the information that we get back from the API, which has been put into our store. As we can see here, we can show that information and of course use conditionals to show certain things on the page, depending on if we're signed in or signed out. Now, just to wrap this part up, after we have authenticated, we of course want to redirect maybe over to the dashboard page. So let's go over, give this a refresh and update our sign in page to sign ourselves in and then go ahead and redirect over to the dashboard page. So this is really, really simple. Uh, when we commit, uh, when we dispatch an action uh, in here, we can actually wait using a promise 
to get back that information. So I'm gonna go ahead and return the result of attempting this authentication. And over in sign in, I can say then, and I can redirect over to another page. So we're gonna access our router. We're gonna go ahead and replace the current page. And we're gonna redirect over to the dashboard. It's not really redirecting, it's just kind of shifting us over uh, to the dashboard page. So now when I go ahead and sign in, I moved over to the dashboard and of course, that's it. We can see that we're authenticated. We can click around, do whatever else we need to in our application. Now you can also check if this fails as well by using catch. So you could say log failed and this is where you might update your validation for example. So if we just come over to the console and hit sign in, you can see that's failed. So you can use that to get back any information uh, and just say to the user, you know, you have some errors or whatever you want to say. We'll leave that for another time. But at least now what we can do is sign in and see our information. Now the only problem is if I refresh the page, everything goes. So what we need to do is store locally within the browser the token so we can re-authenticate when the user re-lands back on your page. We don't want to kind of unauthenticate the user when we refresh the page or anything like that. So let's focus on our Axios headers, which are really important, and also local storage in the next part.